Hey guys, welcome back to the Conservative Patriot. Hope you guys are doing well. It's been a few days since my last video. Um, it's kind of been a crappy weekend, actually, and uh, glad it's over. A lot of uh, baseball politics going on, and uh, it didn't um, end well for my side of the cause, which is, um, it's unfortunate, so... Anyways, moving on. Um, I, you know, I never really talked <clears throat> about why I voted for President Trump or what brought me to the point of voting for President Trump. I can tell you this. <clears throat> I will be voting again for him in 2020. And um, let's go back to the very beginning. So Trump's coming down the escalator of Trump Tower, and the day he announces that he's going to run for president, and I was like, you got to be shitting me. This is this has to be a joke. And I know that he said in the past that he's going to, he, you know, if it gets bad enough that he's going to run for president, but no one's going to take him seriously. So he's on stage, and it's kind of like this year with all the Democrats, and there's like, you know, I think there was 14 12 to 14 Republicans, I can't remember exactly, don't don't hold me to those numbers, but there's a lot of people on stage, and I remember Trump's up there, and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not a Trump guy right now, and um, I remember my wife saying, we were watching, I think it was the, we were watching the first debate, and my wife is like, you know, I said, well, who do you, who do you want to be president, who do you think's going to win, and she said, Trump, and I started laughing, I'm like, you got me. You're kidding me right now. There's no way this guy is going to be president. I said, um, I said my bet is on. Um, I was picking either. Um, There's three. I was going to pick Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, or Ted Cruz. Those were the top three that I thought had a chance because those are the politicians, right? Trump's Trump's a business guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not a politician. He's going to get his he's going to get his butt handed to him. There's no way he's going to get elected. And I heard him talking, and I'm like, eh, he's got some points, but he's not very polished. He's not, people aren't going to take him seriously. There's no way he's going to get in. And uh, it was like the second debate, and somebody else was gone, and I think he started, I think that's when he started calling Jeb Bush, like, um, you know, low energy uh, Jeb Bush, and... Um, Maybe I think he made fun of Ted Cruz's dad or something. I can't remember what it was, but he started coming out with these with his nicknames for everybody, and I was like, "Ah, oh, man, that's not really appropriate." But and then I'm I'm thinking, and I'm like, you know what? I make up nicknames for people too. I'm like, if they look a certain way or they act a certain way, sorry, you got allergies. I'll I'll say something and I'll make up a nickname for him. It's just it makes sense, right? It's kind of like. Uh, it's human nature to do that kind of thing. So I started, I was like, you know, I do the same thing. So months go on and they're, they're debating still. And I'm like, you know, and Trump's is pulling further ahead in the polls. And I'm like, how is this possible? I'm like, what, what is the allure of Donald Trump versus all of these classical, in a sense, politicians? What does he have that these guys don't? And they're just kind of, they're falling away. They're dropping off, and they're like, their 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 fundraising goes down, and they're they're kind of just like, boom, you know, like kamikazeing it into the water. I'm like, wow, these guys are tanking left and right pretty quick, and Trump is just shooting up, shooting up, shooting up. So, the more I heard, and the more I watched, and I wasn't really listening to. His, his policies at the time because I was trying to get around the fact that I couldn't I couldn't get on board yet like trying to trying to figure out why my wife thinks that he's going to be the president so I'm like you know what I'm, I'm just going to start listening and, and I heard him talk he was giving one of his stump speeches or something and the way that he comes across you're like this guy's a billionaire but he doesn't talk like a billionaire. He's not he's not a smooth talker like Obama was. He's not the great communicator as Reagan was called. He's he's a construction guy. You know, he's a builder. <clears throat> and he spent a lot of his youth on construction sites and 
talking with uh, you know regular kind of guys, and I'm like, that's how I talk. You know, I'm not a polished guy. I don't, you know, have all the right words at the right time, and I'm, I say um and uh sometimes, and I might not say the right thing at the right time, or I might use a phrase and go, man, I should not have said that right then, or that's not the way I should have said it, and that's kind of the way he was talking. And I'm like, man, I, I can relate to this guy because. He's from New York. I'm from Connecticut. We kind of sound, not really sound the same, but I we, I could relate to him. It's just There's a relatability in my life that I could relate to what President Trump was saying or how he said it. Um, and being in the business world as long as I have um, in sales, I could understand why he did certain things and i'm like you know what we we do need, we need a business personality to run this country and it's going to take a businessman or woman but in this case businessman to to solve all this or reverse all these problems that um the democrats have put in place the past eight years with obama um and even the last couple of years with Bush, they were just blowing it up um, when they took over the House in, two, in uh, 2000 and whatever the hell it was, six or five, whatever. I don't know. Don't hold me, again, don't hold me up numbers and dates and years. Um, but so, yeah, I could relate to the guy. And I'm like, yeah, business, I'm in business. I can understand. I know where he's coming from. Yes, I, I can see how his his um, take and look on life can be extremely beneficial to this country. So the more I listened, the more I heard, the more I got on the Trump train. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. You know, I think Rubio might have just gotten out of the race and Ted Cruz was still into like the last second. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on board with Trump here. Goodbye, Teddy. So see you later. Maybe better luck down the road and, uh, in the, in the future, but um, <clears throat> if you look at what President Trump has done now, especially with China and these tariffs, it, it's he's playing a business game. You know, he's like, you know what, you have been taking advantage of us, the corporation of the United States, for a long time, and now we are going to push back, and we're not going to take this. You are not taking advantage of us anymore. This is what's fair. This is what we're going to, this is what we expect. If you don't like it, come up with come up with another plan and we'll revisit it. We'll come up with a compromise. So when he walks away from the table, that's the best thing you can do. It's like, yeah, we're not gonna have a deal. You can't you can't um compromise with us, then we're just gonna walk away. Walked away from the Iran deal. Walked away from um, I can't remember what it's called, the energy deal in France that we walked away from. Again, don't hold me to all these names, but he walked away from that. Um, walked away from NAFTA and is and created a new one. I mean, come on. It is, it is working. What, his business strategies is working for this country. Look at the economy. Low employment is the lowest it's ever been for all these minority groups, blacks, Hispanics, Asians. So low. Um, his his immigration policies are are all about um, his America First plan and and making sure that American citizens come before illegal immigrants, not immigrants, illegal immigrants. So again, he is him, <clears throat> not him. Yeah, I guess him and his cabinet and his advisors from this business standpoint are making our country great our country great again and i can't wait for 2020 to come around and i can vote for him again it is going to be fantastic because the longer he's in office the better it's going to get and the better deals we're going to have i mean we just we just came up with another uh he came up with another deal uh, yesterday or the day before with japan to um help our farmers out with um, our surplus of corn that's kind of just kind of been hanging out. They're taking it all. 
It's it's not been like signed yet, but they have a handshake agreement on what they're going to do. So he's doing a lot. Yes, is is it painful sometimes um, when you're dealing in business to kind of do the weight game? Yes, but it's it's the the the, the more you hold off, the better it's going to be for our outcomes and that's exactly what he's doing and uh you know that's that's why i kind of came around and, and voted for him the first time and that's exactly why i'm voting for him again which i cannot wait uh, i wish the elections were tomorrow i would just get it get it over with and and circle the box circle the little square on uh my uh, ballot sheet with his name and put it in the scanner send it off but that's why I'm voting for Trump. That's why I voted for Trump. That's why I'm voting for him again. And, uh, you know, let's keep making America great. So that's all I have for you tonight. And uh, always remember to stay on the right side. Have a great evening.